goodness me, as you come to us, we're just hearing some breaking news. It involves that club, Al Ali. They're the big movers today. It involves Ivan Tony of Brentford. We're told that there's a £40 million deal agreed between Brentford and Al Ali. And that Ivan Tony is going to have a medical. This is incredible. Yeah. They've already said they're signing Victor Osman. Now Tony as well. What a front two at Al Ali. Over to the panel. <laughs> Can anyone believe this? After everything that's happened, we're talking about both of them to Chelsea, one of them to Chelsea. What a front two, as Pete's just said, that Al Ali could have. Unbelievable. Osman should, and Tony. Should, should we be surprised with this window, with what we just heard with the Osman deal? Maybe not. But wow, that is absolutely staggering. I mean, there we are talking about how we could fit into Chelsea, mm -hmm. the problems he could relieve, and, and Kwaku wasn't too, too uh, <laughs> you know, taken to it. But now, both of them not going to Chelsea and potentially ended up at Al Ali. Well... We, we've seen the Caicedo, a similar thing happened last summer. Mm. Does this mean that maybe the Osman deal isn't 100% done? Could we see a Caicedo situation again, maybe? It, it's, it's a situation that's clearly in flux, right? It's changed so much over the last hour. We thought that because Osman, it seemed like, agreed to go to our Ali, that it meant that Ivan Tony was off of grabs, and it now it seems like both of them are going. We need to, to wait for it to all play out. We need some medicals to happen. We need contracts to be signed. And until that happens, we don't know. But if you're looking at it objectively, this would be a crushing blow for Chelsea, who clearly made everybody aware that they were in for a striker. If they miss out on both of their primary targets, Ivan Tony and Victor Osman, um, it, it doesn't look great for Chelsea. From my point of view, in terms of looking at this Chelsea squad, you've got Nicholas Jackson there, you just brought in Jao Felix, you've got Nkunku as well. People argue that none of them are out-and-out out number nines, but I think Chelsea's issue is not firepower. Their issue is defensively, but... It, there's no doubt about it. It could be a bit of a blow in terms of missing out on both of these options. <laughs> I wish you could see Dan's face right now. You can see Ivan Tony, but, but Dan's face. You were looking quite confused. I, I just. I, what, what, I don't even want you to come to me because what, what, can, <laughs> what, what can you even say? We, we, we talk about something and then it changes <laughs> like five minutes later. I this just, is deadline day. This is what no, it's but about. This is, like, that, this is next this level is what we need. with Tony and Austin. <laughs> so they, can't, they can't sign both. Of course I mean, they can. I hope, I hope, I hope Al Ali play a 4 4 2 because if they don't, then when, what are they going to do? Yeah, and I. And, and you know what, from the Ivan Tony perspective, actually, I think it is important to talk about this because this, this move or a move for Ivan Tony has been spoken about for, for such a long time. And I think early on when the speculation was arriving about Ivan moving it, Saudi Arabia wasn't really on the cards. And the fact that that's been the only real offer presented to Ivan at this time... Um, it's quite surprising. I think there could have been some situations where maybe you look at that valuation. Did anyone in the Premier League want to pay £40 million? Anyone in for Ivan now with a year left on his contract? Maybe not. Did they want to tempt Brentford or tempt themselves to sort of say, we'll come in late with, with a lower offer um, in the dying hours of, of the window? And, it can, and like you said, it can still change. But I wonder how Ivan Tony feels... Did, did he maybe feel that I have to take this opportunity because there isn't anything left on the table, staying at Brentford for another year and assess my options at the end of the year? You spoke about that, Dan. It is interesting to, to, to see that with what we're hearing now is the fact that actually this has been agreed from the Brentford side and it, and it seems as if Ivan will go there. I just think if he does this, after all the stuff he said about where, what he wants to do in his career, playing at the top level, you've just kind of, I know he's not in this squad, but kind of got yourself, you've just played in the tournament for England. Don't don't go to Saudi now because that's, that's probably the end. Do you, do you think do you, do you yeah. think that's the end of, of his England career if he does go? Um, it's a new dawn under Lee Carlsley. Obviously, he's a man who's got his own ideas. We saw that, and it was reflected in his later squad. He brought in Angel Gomez. Um, he made a few changes. He brought in Noni Madweki as well. Um, but you do you do assume that if you go to play football in Saudi Arabia, that it does limit your chances in terms of playing for England. We saw Jordan Henderson not go to the Euros as a result of the move he made to Saudi Arabia, despite the fact that in January he joined Ajax. It just wasn't enough time for him to get his legs back under him. But back under him. But I do I do think that Ivan Tony is a player that I would like to think thinks about legacy, right? Mm -hmm. And he's a man that got the assist in the game against Slovakia, the round 16 game for Harry Kane's winner in that. Um, he was very effective for England when he did play in terms of that penalty he scored as well. And so it's just, uh, it, like I say, it's a shame to see a player leave the Premier League because we are obviously biased. We watch the Premier League week in, week out. But I don't also think you can begrudge a player going out and earning all of that money tax-free because ultimately it's a very, very short career. So there's two, there's two sides to that coin, but I just think it, it's, it's blown my mind that 
Al Ali could potentially sign both <laughs> Ivan Tony and Victor Osimhen exactly. on deadline day, and Chelsea were in for both of them apparently. Yeah. How hard Tony worked to get to Premier League yeah. level. It's happened relatively late in his in his career. He's not played there from a young age. You've worked so hard to get to play for England, to get to the Premier League. You played three seasons in the Premier League now. Yeah. Don't don't give that up now. But football, what we have seen is that football changes so, so quickly. Yes. And, and I think when, when something's mapped out or, or you perceive it to be mapped out, in this industry of football, which we've seen, it's very ruthless at times. Sometimes options that you had only 12 months ago are completely not there. We have to also be honest about the situation that where we thought Arsenal was a, a, a exactly. realistic possibility, when we thought, you know, Chelsea was a realistic possibility, Manchester United needed a number nine, all of these teams have gone in different directions. And the fact of the matter is that these offers are not on the table for Ivan Tony. And they, they don't exist. So actually, when you are a player like Ivan Tony and you think, I had it maybe mapped out that I probably would have went to Arsenal or Chelsea or Manchester United, and you go, well, those options aren't there. I've had, I've had, a, I have had, a, I've had a difficult year considering what's happened with his ban and, and stuff like that. And he's come back to, into it and he's only got a year left. Brentford, he maybe didn't expect it to go the way that it did with them maybe not accepting bids or, or having a different valuation. Things change. And that's the only viable option he has, apart from staying at Brentford. And he might just feel like, well, actually, it's time for a change in my career regardless. And to turn down that sort of money, I can't do it. Where, where does this leave Brentford then? Well, their replacement got injured. injured. Yeah. Yeah. You might, we've discussed yesterday on the show, you know, Mopai was available. He's not going to be someone they're going to be able to go and get, get now, obviously moving elsewhere. They've kind of had life without him over the last 12 months more often than not, haven't they? So they may just look at it with, with what they've got and just go with what they have at this stage rather than making a panic signing. Yeah, you can't, you can't diminish Brentford's role in this as well. Obviously, Ivan Tony's got a year left in his contract. It takes two to tango when it comes to that in terms of you know the age of the player, you know the length of the contract and there's no doubt about it that Brentford would know they can't afford to lose such a valuable asset for free next summer. So they also have a part to play in this and this is why we're in this position right now. Goodness me, what a day this is shaping up to be. Ivan Tony on his way to Saudi Arabia. We're told he's going to have his medical in London. That's all been scheduled already. So, looks like Osman and Tony heading to Saudi Arabia. Out Ali, hogging the ball. Give someone else a pass, will you?